solve a single problem. But in India, the crowd seethed again under a new use of British force. The new viceroy had made arrests without warrant, suspended court trials, political organizations, seized property. Again, 100,000 were in jail. Abdul Ghaffar Khan had been arrested. Nehru. December 28th, on Gandhi's return, the crowds waited eagerly. Mrs. Nehru and Kasturbai waited on the dock. Mrs. Nehru to talk about her husband's arrest. Kasturbai to be with Gandhi. Married to Gandhi when he was only 13, they had grown closer till they seemed one. And India called her Ba, mother, as they called Gandhi Bapu, the father. Congress leaders, too, waited, already talking as they came down the gangplank. Gandhi with Mrs. Nehru with the... And the streets were crowded in a demonstration of joy and relief at his return. Bapu, the father, was home. Wherever he went, there were rejoicing crowds. Everywhere he was garlanded, the traditional garland to show honor and respect the symbol of love and reverence. Crowds stood waiting to see him. They felt the actuality of his love for them and, and returned it. They had poured out to him their hungers and needs and fears, and he had become their voice. They watched from the tops of buildings. The women were holding up their children to see him, to see a wise man in action who gives wisdom and blessing, it is said in India. Crowd surging forward so that his car could hardly move. The cry went up, Gandhi G. Key J. Victory to Gandhi. And Gandhi spoke to these people. I have come back empty-handed, but I have not compromised the honor of my country, he said. There was a way to be free of the new harsh laws, but it must be a non-violent way. If laws were unjust, they would be disobeyed, but not capriciously or from ill will or hatred, but because an evil act must be resisted as disease tissue must be cured for the health of a man. And India would invite free people the world to watch and study the progress of the movement. He read reports on what was happening, and so to Lord Willington, the Viceroy, his secretaries took letters asking for a meeting. On December 31st, the Working Committee authorized Gandhi to renew Satyagraha, non-violent resistance. And January 4th, all India heard that Gandhi was arrested. And the Harijan story came to a climax. Gandhi had fought for these people, stayed in their quarters with them like this. These Harijan watching him had been called untouchables for thousands of years, had been by tradition segregated. Now Gandhi gave them the name Harijan, which means children of God. But now too, he was informed the British had given them a separate vote. And Gandhi went on a fast against this, because he said it was not a political matter, but a moral one. It was a matter of the human dignity of this part of the Brotherhood of India. And it was India, not the British, that should, for its own good, show respect for these untouchables. Some misunderstood the fast, and so Vitel by Patel explained, to say a word regarding the recent past by Mahatma Gandhi. It has been made to appear by the British press and the British public man that Mahatma Gandhi is opposed to the political representation of the untouched. Nothing is further from the truth. As a matter of fact, Mahatma Gandhi is prepared to give more representation to the, to the depressed classes than what the award gives. He objects to the method by which 
that representation is supposed to be secured by the award. And on the sixth day of Gandhi's fast, suddenly temple buildings that for thousands of years had been closed to the Harijan were thrown open. Ancient buildings witnessed the end of thousands of years of segregation. All India had heard. In jail, the Mahatma, the wise man of God, was dying. Gandhi expected goodness from his own people as much as he did from the British. India trembled. The Mahatma might die. And a pact was signed swiftly by all the Indian leaders. No one, it said, shall be regarded untouchable by reason of his faith. And now he traveled for seven months, beginning September 7, 1932, working for the Harijan, collecting money for Harijan work, for his newspaper, Harijan. It is not enough to change laws, he said over and over again. You must change men's hearts. He himself went to live and eat and sleep and talk with the once segregated people. For as always, Gandhi took the way of direct action. Truth could be found many ways. He told them every man finds his own way. His, he felt, was this way of action. Not necessarily political action. He was a researcher, he told them, in the field of moral force. He had worked out his experiments in the field of politics, but now he was ready for his retirement from politics. There were 700,000 villages in India. Such village life had long been the key life of India. He would work his experiments in the power of the human spirit there now. And so he announced to the Congress leaders. And he went to live with Kasturbai in a village in the heart of India called Sevagram. And all watched to see how the Mahatma would now live village life. People of all religions came to stay there. The Congress leaders came to confer, and people came from all over the world to see him, to sit and talk in Gandhi's simple one-roomed adobe hut, the floor of swept earth, in it a rug, a spinning wheel, a soapbox for a desk. by the ashram laundry and Wada Junction, where Congress leaders now met. Always there were visitors. With his secretaries, he answered letters from all over the world. At this center, this ashram, Gandhi was making every kind of experiment. The people of India watched his every move. He was making experiments in improving the food they ate. A cottage held a hospital where the medicine whose ingredients could be grown were studied. He was experimenting with better agricultural techniques. The 700,000 villages were 80% agricultural, using such methods of irrigation as this. Gandhi, with those who came to see him, walked the land studying every possible use of the land, using the tools and talents they had. There were sugar palms which could be tapped. The greatest dignity came to the man who could create with his own hands. Sugar could be made into solid sugar cake. Let them start with what they had. Produce and use what you produce, he said. Machinery, when the machine served man and didn't engulf him, then machinery would be good. But the spirit of the man must be served first, not the machine. 